As you recall in the previous training video, we learned how to create a basic formula to add up a range of cells or even averaging the range of cells. Here I want to do something that's a bit more complex but a lot quicker when it comes to summing up a range or averaging a range by using what are called functions, the sum function and the average function. But before I do that, when you look at a range of cells and you want to find out which cells contain functions or formulas, for my spreadsheet I could use common sense and go, okay, the number that I have down below here should contain a function or formula that gives me the results. The only way to really find out that if it is a result of some function or formula is to select it and look up here in the formula bar and go, oh, okay, there's the formula or function. But when you click off and you need to take a look to see if all the cells contain the functions and formulas that are adding it up and somebody just didn't type in a number, one way that might be quicker than selecting every cell is to come up here and click on the formulas tab on the ribbon, go to the formula auditing group, and it's that command right there. When I hover over it, you can see in the pop-up it says show formulas, and then there's the shortcut key control apostrophe, and it says it'll display the formula in each cell instead of the resulting value. Go ahead and click on it, and it pushes open and displays all the cells that contain the functions or formulas. Why would you want to do that? Well, again, if you want to be able to spot those cells and make sure that they have the function or formula in it and be able to do a quick review of the formula without selecting each one to make sure it's consistent, like this should be for the column C, so there are C's, and that for column D and E, and that makes sense. You can also select it, and it looks like it's in edit mode because it highlights the cells that this formula is dependent upon. So that's pretty cool to be able to spot quickly without having to double click to get inside of it to see the colors. And then also know that what you see here when you print will actually come out on the printer. So if you don't want to see the formulas when you print the worksheet off, then you need to go back to hiding them. So to hide them, just come back up here and deselect it or use the shortcut keys, control, apostrophe, and they're gone. Now let's go ahead and add up a range here for this employee, the total sales that they made from January through April. And instead of using a simple formula, we're going to use functions. And one way that you can enter in a function is by simply typing it in. Equals. And of course, you'll need to know the name of the function. So when we want to add up a range of cells, the name for that function is sum. So just like it sounds, S. And the moment I type in the first letter, it lists all the functions. And you'll notice that to the left of each name, you got the FX, F. That's a symbol for function. Just think of F for function. And then I'm looking for sum, so I can either scroll down or use the up or down arrow keys to toggle around, or just keep typing it until you get the process of elimination by typing in more until I finally get to the word sum, and there it is, sum. And you can see to the right, you get the pop-up that gives you a synopsis that says it's going to add up all the numbers in a range of cells. Cool. To go ahead and select the function, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either double click on it, and it pops open the syntax for you to go ahead and enter in, well, it says number one. But in our case, it's going to be the first range, and it can be the only range. Or if you have additional ranges that you want to add up, you can go ahead and type in comma and select another range. You can do it that way, or let me hit the escape key. You can type in equals sum, and with it highlighted, just hit the tab key and it pops open the syntax as well. So the range that we want to select with the cursor flashing here is to go ahead and select the range for the first employee, their ID, and it's going to be C7 through. F7. And notice over here in the function, you have the first cell, which is C7, and the last cell. The colon means through. So C7 through F7, everything in between those two cells, including those cells. Then all you have to do is go ahead and hit enter, and there you go. Does it check out? Well, let's go ahead and click and drag to select the range of cells and go down and see if we get the total sum 705, 705. It checks out. Now, if you made a mistake and you want to go ahead and edit it, just double click in it, as we talked about in the previous training video except I want to add something more. You can also move the entire range by hovering over one of the borders until you can see a four-way arrow that when you click on the border, that means you can drag it in any four directions. So if you want to move it around, say, okay, that's my range. Okay, that doesn't make sense, but nonetheless, you can move it around if you want to include a different range. Or you can actually hover over one of the corner boxes called resizing handles. It's called that because when you click and drag, it'll resize the selected range. And so when you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, you're hovering over the resizing handle. You can then click and drag and go up, in, out, down, and broaden your selection or reduce it. And if you don't want to accept the changes that you made, like I don't, hit the escape key and it goes back to the default when I double click what I originally had selected. And then hit the escape key to get back out of that edit mode. 
Now notice that when I have the cell selected, it's got a little, well, let me click off of it, it's got a little green triangle in the upper left hand corner. And then when I select it, it gives me a little exclamation point, that tag. When you hover over it, it's giving you a warning, that green icon to let you know something's going on. So when you select it, then it gives you a little tag that you can hover that gives you more information, a synopsis of what the issue is. And it says the formula in the cell refers to a range that has additional numbers adjacent to it. So the range it's referring to is this range, and it's saying it's got additional numbers around the range. Well, it's got one to the left, and it's saying basically we didn't include it. So it's questioning our judgment and saying, eh, I'm not sure you included everything that you should have. Well, guess what? I did. So what you can do is go ahead and click back in the cell to get the tag, then click on the tag, and you can see it's highlighted there, even a shorter synopsis, formula omits adjacent cell. And you can say, you know what? I want to ignore you because that's not true. I got what I want. Oh, rats. How do I go back to unignoring my ignoring those errors? Well, come up here and click on the File tab, go backstage, down to Options, and then select the Formula tab, and come down here, and there it is, Error Checking. And you can see by default it's going to enable background error checking, and the color that indicate that there are errors is green. You can change it and choose another color. And then finally, if you want to go back to those errors that you ignored, then go ahead and click on Reset Ignored Errors. Click on it. And before I click OK, while we're here, let me come up here and show you about the calculation options. By default, yours should be done automatically. In other words, let me click and drag the title bar so I can move the window out of here. That when you have a bunch of cells that this formula is dependent upon, when you change this and you type in like one, they only made one dollar for January, it should recalculate this automatically and reduce it to a smaller number. And that's the default. But if you choose manual, and you check the box recalculate workbook before saving, that means that when you make a bunch of changes in all these cells that these formulas are dependent upon, it won't automatically update until you actually click save. So that way, you can get the numbers that you want in place and still keep focus of what the value used to be without it actually updating until you click save. In any case, that's up to you. Let me go change this back to automatic as I want it to be. And we clicked on Reset Ignored Errors. So when I click OK, I should get the green triangle back. So when I select it, it gives me the pop-up, and then I can go ahead and ignore it again. And then finally, instead of just actually selecting a range, you can just simply type it in, like equals SUM. And instead of hitting the Tab key to accept the function, just if you know how to type it, just do open parentheses, and then type in your range. And that would be C8, colon, means through. And then to the last column, which would be F but the same row, 8, and there you go, just hit enter. Now why would you want to type it in as opposed to typing in the first part and then clicking and dragging to select the range? Well, it makes sense to click and drag to select the range because it's so small, but you can imagine if you had a range either going over to the right horizontally or down vertically, if it goes down to like, let's say, row 50, when you click and drag, Excel gets a little excited and it may overshoot it to like row 100. Uh, that gets a little annoying, so if you know your range, it might be easier to type it in than clicking and dragging. And then just go ahead and hit enter. Fabulous. Well, we get our error. We can go ahead and click in the cell, click on the drop down arrow, and ignore it for this one as well. Another way to insert a function besides, let's select the next cell, typing in equals SUM, and you see the symbol FX. Well, that symbol is also up here on the formula bar FX, meaning that you can go ahead and click on it, to open up the insert function window. Let me hit the escape key a couple of times to get out of the cell and come up here and click on it to show you the insert function window. Now why would you want to do it this way as opposed to typing it in? Well, it gives you a bit more detail than just what you see when you type it in. For example, let's go ahead and look up a function first and there's quite a few ways to do it. You can either go ahead and type it in in the box up above and click go or you can click on the drop down arrow besides the most recently used, which, well, sum was the most recently used, so it's there. So I could just go ahead and select it, and you can see down below the syntax of it, and then the synopsis of it adds up all numbers in a range of cells. And if you need help on this function, go ahead and click on the hyperlink. But we'll go ahead and continue here that if it's not the most recently used, you can click on the drop down arrow and see if it's in one of the categories, like maybe math and trig, and they're sorted alphabetically. If it's not there, Probably the best thing to do is click on the drop down arrow and choose all outside of actually typing in the name of the function if you can remember how to spell it. In any case, you can go ahead and click and drag and it's sorted alphabetically down to the S's. And there it is. And then go ahead and click OK. Or, like I said, 
If you don't want to click and drag to search it, then you can delete it here and type in SUM and say go, and it found it or it recommended it down below. With it selected, click okie dokie, and there we go. We got our function arguments window, and in the first number, in this case our range, it's already got something in there. Let me click and drag the title bar down so we can see what we're looking at, and it's got the column H. Well, why has it got column H? It's because it's got numbers adjacent to it, so Excel is trying to define a pattern to help you out to say, okay, I assume you want the numbers that are closest to the cell that contains the function. No, 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 no. So that's okay. Let's just go ahead and type it in the first field here, the number one field, and say it's going to be for this row, row nine, but for the first column, it'll be C. So C9, colon, through, and then the last column is F, same row, nine. And then notice over to the right-hand side, it defines all the cells that are within that range or that it can squeeze in here. And so the first cell is 19 to 10, 19 to 10, and then 15, 15, and so on. So at least we can verify what we have typed in here in case if what we're typing in the function here we don't see in our main view and it's on row HH. But we're familiar with what we want to include in here. So when we type in HH9 through HZ9 and the numbers don't look familiar and you're like, wow, those are huge numbers. That's not what I'm looking for. Then that's an indicator that you probably have the wrong range selected. So that can be helpful. And then down below it gives us the total of it already the formula result, and then the formula result here as well. And you can include additional ranges, but before we do that, you can either type it in or, let me delete it, you can click on this collapsible dialog box button, because when you click on it, it actually collapses the box. And then you can go ahead and click and drag the title bar down to find your range, click and drag. And then to open it back up, once you selected your range, you can either click on it to pop it open, or let me click on it again to collapse it, hit the enter key on the keyboard to pop it back open. And then if you have another range that includes cells for the same person for additional months, then go ahead and click on that, collapse it, select the range. I know it's not the correct range, but when I hit enter, you can see how it can get progressive here, one range after another. So let me go ahead and hit the backspace key to get rid of that range, and then click okie dokie, and there you go. Now, in addition to that, not only on the formula bar, but if you look on the formulas tab, let's go down to the next cell, you also have the insert function. Click on it, opens up the same window, close out, or you can come up here and you've got these different categories. There's the logical with all the functions in there. If you want to go ahead and, well, it's not in there, click off and look for it. More functions, statistical engineering. Oh, it's just going crazy. Let's go ahead and click off. You do have the auto sum. So when you click on the drop down arrow, the sum, when you hover over it, is the sum function. And you can see in the pop-up, you know, it's got equal sum. And what's cool is that when you click on it, it's automatically going to choose a range for you. But you're like, no, 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 not that range. All you have to do, if you want a different range, is just go ahead and click and drag the correct range, and then just hit enter, and that goes pretty fast. And then, if you notice up here on the formulas tab, you also have the insert function button that you can click on. And it brings up the same window. Let's go ahead and close out. Let's go down to the next cell. And you've got the function library. So if you want to look for a function, click on one of the corresponding drop down arrows for those that are logical. Look up references. Also, more functions. Ooh, it's just getting cheesy. Let's go ahead and click off. You also have the auto sum, which is a quick summing up of a range. It gets a lot faster than you typing it in. And you can see in the pop up, it is the sum function. It's just called AutoSum because it'll automatically do it for you. How does that work? Well, you can click on it and it automatically selects a range. Now, it's selecting the cells that are next to it because they have something in it. Assuming that that's what you want, it's trying to be helpful, but it's not. But I appreciate that. Let's go ahead and click and drag to select the correct range so we can reshift its focus or selection for this employee ID. And then just go ahead and hit Enter, and there we go. And you'll see that not only can you click on it, but when you click on the drop down arrow, you also get the auto average, auto count numbers, max, min. So if I come up here and let's do it for the averages. So we can get the average cell for this employee for the first four months. Come up here, click on the drop down arrow. Let's do auto average. Again, it just goes out and finds the first cell that contains numbers and it wants to select it. And if there's no adjacent cells next to it, it won't go beyond it. So that's not the range. Go ahead and click and drag and select the correct range. Hit enter. And there's the average cell for this employee for the four months. 
and he averaged about 17,000. And then once you have that, since we want to get it for the rest of the employee IDs, you can go ahead and copy and paste it, or the quickest way to copy and paste, since the cells are adjacent, just go ahead and select the first one that contained the average function, hover over the lower right-hand corner, that little square, until you can see the black cross, the autofill handle, and then just click and drag down, click off, and did it do it correctly? Go ahead and select the next one down below and see if the average is still in the same row, 7, as the original. No, you can see up here it's in the next row, 8. So as you copy and paste it down, it also wants to update the formula and go down with you. So that makes the autofill handle or copying and pasting relative and not absolute.